So nice to see that there are so many people interested in my talk about MapBender. Welcome here at PhosphorUG Europe. There are some places left. Please come in. So I will talk about MapBender and how to create applications for your needs with a new version. And it's a state of software um, presentation. So maybe for those who don't know MapBender, you will not learn the basics here, but I hope with some of my screenshots you will get an idea of what MapBender does. So my name is Astrid Emde and I am GS consultant since many years, I'm doing setting up GeoPortal solutions with many customers in the last years. I'm trainer at FOSS Academy and I'm in the MapBender PSC and I'm the technical lead and do the coordination in that project. And as you can see, I'm active in other projects like OS Geo Live where we put MapBender on every version that comes out since many years. And um, I'm in OSGU, I was in the board of OSGU and now run the marketing committee. So if you'd like to join, you are welcome to, to join us and other more. Um, so in MapBender, we, I talked about the PSC. I'm one person in this group and uh, I think the most important person is Thorsten here is our core developer, Thorsten Haag, greetings to Germany if you follow the talk. And um, so he, he is um, quite new in the project, but he coordinates the whole development and we have more developer in, in Bonn mostly and Berlin working on MapBender and running the projects. Um, so uh, at Ware Group, where I work, we have about 50 people working there, developers, consulting, all sorts of geospatial experts. And we support open source geospatial since many years and run successfully projects with um, OSGEO software um, in our company. So we support Foskis and OSGEOs, we are sponsors and we are the companies behind MapBender, WebGIS client suite and Map components. You might have heard about it. It's a um, software that uh, runs with MapLibre. So if you're interested in that topic, you can talk to me too. And um, yeah, I, I took this presentation, this this um, picture from PhosphoG Lausanne. That's where my uh, career started with PhosphoG. It was my first PhosphoG. And um, at that time, I already gave this presentation about MapBender and um, Fiona is a software, uh, is a project that um, is used every year from the farmers and they edit their parcels where they grow crops and they get um, support from the government and they can handle everything there. So to show you that, yeah, 2006 already MapBender was around, so it's over 20 years old now and we did in the meantime a lot of refactoring, but uh, we, you will see we still fo follow our mission and the software in basic does the same as, as you can see here. So you will hear about MapBender, what, what is it? We will have a look in the new version and what we got, what the new features are and we make a small view to the future. So here you can see MapBender and how it looks like. You normally have um, this map area where you can see your services. We support WMS and WMTS that you can add to your application. You have many tools that you can use. You have a side pane here where you can add a layer tree, for example, and all sorts of things. And you have this footer area we, where you can place also the elements that you would like to support. And um, yeah, the nice thing is that you can create application for your needs. So um, we, you will see we will provide template applications and you are free to modify them in afterwards. So what does it mean to modify them? We have this nice uh, backend for administration and every application that you see has a nice uh, backend um, section where you can modify in this part for the layout, you can modify which elements, we call them elements, which elements you would like to uh, provide in this application. And um, so we have this toolbar that we just saw, the part at the top where you can place these elements and 
the, the important part is here where you can say whether this element is visible and whether it should be provided for desktop only or also on the mobile version that are the uh, second and third um, button and then you could edit um, every element and you could, with a key, you could say, okay, this element should only be visible for some users, and if you don't want this element, you can delete it from the application. And you can, via drag and drop, easily reorder all these elements. And this is a section for the layout, and at layer set, you would have the section for the services. So as you saw here, we have this section for the service, ah, no. Here we have uh, the layer tree and I can provide which service I want to provide in my application. So, um, so in the layer set section, I could define what service I would like to provide in my application. And um, the nice thing is with MapBender, you can provide as many applications as you like. So you would like to work on a template maybe that represents your um, yeah, your city or your project, and then you can easily make copies of applications. Um, if you want to have a closer look, you can have a look in our um, reference uh, list. So we have many showcases listed here. Some still use older versions, so don't, um, yeah. Um, you, you, s you will see many um, different applications. M many of the users are communes or cities, but there are also um, organizations um, using um, MapBender like um, Vattenfall, for example. And um, yeah, so here you can get some inspiration and maybe from this screenshot already you see that MapBender looks always different, so you can always add, uh, change the design as you like. So um, here it's an overview. So what is MapBender? It's a WebGIS client suite with administration web interface that we just saw. We can easily create applications without writing a single line of code. So maybe developers might think, oh, boring, but uh, maybe the others which no, don't, don't have skills to, go to code, they, for them it might be a good solution. And for developers, I can also say you can an, um, add modules to MapBender. So if you want to code, you can write your own module and um, ex um, extend MapBender with new functionality. So you can create any number of applications with only one installation. You can create and maintain a OWS repository for the services. You can create users and roles and manage them. You can grant users and groups other access to applications and services. And um, yeah, we support several languages and you could add support for your language to, to MapBender. So this is in short words, what MapBender does. It's modul modular, so you could add your functionality, and um, yeah, you can provide your own design, and you can override code that we provide with your own code, so we will see in a minute how that works. It's under the MIT license, and since 2006, MapBender is an OSGU project. It was the first OSGU project, we are proud of that, and we are, um, yeah, happy in this community. So if you would like to join the community, you are welcome. And here are some links, important links about the project. We have the code on GitHub. The documentation is quite good in English and German. And we have, since this version 4, we have a developer documentation where we try to yeah, make it more easy for developers to, to make the first steps. And we have a workshop repository with um, enhanced functionality that you could uh, try, and the gallery and a demo where you can try the front end. So what, is, what are the requirements when you want to work with MapBender? So you need a web server, a server, and you need a web server like Apache or Nginx. You need PHP installs on the server and extensions, and you need a database where you store all the information that you um, create while managing your applications. So we already um, provide a lot of functionality when you install MapBender. We call these elements and you can use them um, already and you can configure every element to your needs. And uh, we offer 
elements for visualization and to create and edit data. And uh, we provide search and print functionality and much more. So we offer three template applications and you can, um, these applications demonstrate what is possible with MapBender and you can easily copy them and build your own application from them. You'd, or you, if you want, you can start from scratch and build up the whole application as you want. So MapBender 4 was released one week ago and uh, we had we made many updates and improvements. You're welcome to try it out. And here we add a visual change log inspired by the Kugis project. We thought, let's do something like that as well. And there you find out what, what happened. So this is what I now want to present, what we did. So a big, big um, goal was to update all the components. And now with version 4, we are um, up to date. And um, here you can see we have Symfony in MapBender. It's a PHP framework that we use. And with Symfony, we get a lot of um, functionality already, like the database abstraction with Doctrine and other, um, other functionality. Then we have open layers integrated in MapBender. We use Bootstrap, jQuery. We use symbols from Fund Awesome and um, yeah, some more libraries, which I didn't list here. But that. Oh, that was a big part. And then, yeah, we did a lot of things. And maybe this list goes a bit into detail, but with, with this Symfony update, we had to change the directory structure and many files changed. So for those who um, have MapBender running already and want to update, they will see that they have to change, um, yeah the locations of the file and have to modify some things to update. But we are happy, we can uh, say that it's no problem to update from an older version to a newer one, so feel free to um, to change your version to MapBender 4. And um, yeah, now you can see here how it looks like. We have a new uh, login image which comes with every major version and here you can see when you um, want to work with MapBender um, maybe your application is not uh, visible um, at once so some applications are not published so you have to log in and then you get access maybe to more um, applications and here you can see how it works we have um, a, an important file it's called parameters yaml where we can define our individual um, settings and here for example for this login backdrop you could refer to your um, um, your own um, image maybe your um, um, building of your organization or something else or fountain and then it looks individual already we have the splash screen for every application and here in the back end we have another look so we have this basic information that you can uh, configure as well and for every application you could um, deactivate or activate the splash screen and in the parameters yaml again you could configure which image to take then um, another view in the applications. We worked on the design and um, tried to make the design um, better and um, in every element the same style should be used. So we worked on that and hopefully it, it worked out fine. And um, yeah, we have these three applications left before in the versions before we had some more and we, uh, we tried to demonstrate all elements. So um, we also have a nice small improvement. So we have this side pane and now you can drag it with a mouse and you could enable it in the back end. Again, you could say whether you want to allow this or not and um, it's configurable. So um, as I said, we use WMS and um, for WMS, you have feature info. So some services provide information. And normally, we had a dialogue where you can see the information that came back from the WMS. But now, um, we have the possibility to have all the information in the side pane. Same for the measuring tool. So there's a measuring tool that allows you to measure lines and polygons. And um, here, 
you can now um, provide it in the side pane as well. And the new thing is also that you can uh, um, switch between line and area measurement uh, via these radio buttons before you had to provide two buttons. For example, in your um, toolbar, you had to create like two elements and two buttons and then um, create for every functionality a single button. But now it's both possible to have it in one um, element. We have many symbols that we provide, and we provide now more symbols in our new version. And they are from Font Awesome. And um, the nice thing is now that you can um, add your own symbols. Again, in the parameters YAML, you can define which symbol you want to take. You define a title, and then it will show up in the list. And you also could deactivate the symbols that come from MapBender and define your own. We, d we did a lot on translations. As you can see here, this is how the translation um, parameters look like. So if you would use no language, this is how it would look like. But normally, MapBender takes the language of the browser. So your browser setting is used, and automatically, this language will be chosen. And um, as you can see, we provide some languages. Um, you can see here in the list which languages are there already. And there are some language files that you have to translate. And for this version, I had a partner who helped me. It was ChatGPT who, who did some of the work. And I only had to check whether everything is fine. So if you would like to support and do some translation, you are welcome. And so I said the browser recognizes the language, but if you don't want that automatic language detection, you could also set a parameter variable to false, and then you can define which language you want to like to take. And you can overwrite code. And um, yeah, so this is a welcome page, and here it's a single example. I could add my own um, code and I like this, uh, I could override the, um, the files that come from a bender, and it's easy just to add some more lines there. Um, here is a solution from, from Germany, where, where they did it also, and as you can see, they have their own uh, images and their own um, corporate colors that they use here, and it's easy to override um, yeah, Twig template or JavaScript or CSS, if you like. Then we have um, a search router that's a really nice tool. So from the data of your database, PostgreSQL normally, you, would, uh, you can easily create uh, search elements and create uh, searches, in this case, sorry, it's in German, for places. And um, now it is possible to export the result list to CSV and easily download it. And, um, this is a parameter in the configuration that you have to, to add. It's here, this export CSV, true, and then this new button will show up. There's another um, new feature. So here you can see the new design, and you see that the list now is, um, the result list is now sortable. And you could define with two parameters uh, which column you would like to sort by, and whether ascend date or descend date. Then there's another feature, you can uh, add labels. So as you can see here, I have nice labels for my search results, and you can define one or more columns of your um, yeah, search um, resource, and they will be taken as label, and you can design how the label should look like. And you have the print legend, you can now put it on the map, not only below. You ha we have digitizer improvements, so MapBender allows you to um, edit data and you can add data easily, so you can create your own um, forms via YAML configuration, and then you can edit point polygons and lines and donuts and circles and all sorts of things. And as you can see here, you can provide forms. They can be complex or simple. and um, 
Here you can see that you can define a style for all the objects, but then you can edit um, single objects and say, okay, this polygon should be have a different style, so we have a style manager now for all these objects. A new feature, I have to come to the end, a new feature is a data upload element, which allows you to drag and drop uh, J GeoJSON, KML, GML, GPX to um, this dialog, and then it will be shown on the map. So data upload, um, it's the first um, implementation and um, it works quite nice and we have some ideas for future implementation. So labeling, showing attributes, styling, saving the data because at the moment it's only saved in the client. We had to work on the permission handling, so we um, yeah we had an ACL bundle integrated but that was deprecated in Symfony, so now we implement it implemented it uh, on our own and it's easy now and you can update from an older version um, easily. To come to an end, I have a really nice feature that I can show here. It's a map and a QGIS plugin. So for those who work with QGIS server, they could use this plugin. They could um, tell the plugin where the server is and um, add the credentials and then you could save your QGIS server project here. Tr it will be automatically transferred to the server and then loaded in the MapBender application that you choose. So this is a MapBender um, server and you can define in which application you want to load it. You can design in which section you want to load it. It's really, really nice. Okay, and there's an article about this from my colleague Jörg Thomsen. It's in German, but I think you easy can translate it. And if you want to try map under the easy way, you can uh, use our new Docker image. And we, um, yeah, we worked on this part as well. And now with every release, a new version is triggered. And um, you can use this functionality for your project as well and build these automatic images. So we have some more goals for the future, but still working on the roadmap. We have to update some repositories and in the next versions, we want to work on new format support. We wanted to implement OGC API features, but it, will not, it was not in version four uh, possible. So we have this for future releases and work on the routing. So this is all. Here's the link for the visual change log. Um, I hope you got an inspiration what MapBender is and what you can do with it. And I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. And questions from um, users? Thanks. It was really interesting. Uh, can you? go a little bit under the hood, so MapBender comes with the GIS server or you should uh, run your own GIS server and then s connect with MapBender? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. Maybe I did not mention that um, in my talk. So MapBender is really the WebGIS client um, application and it doesn't, it's not possible to create web services, web map services with MapBender. So it only communicates with the services, but you have to create them with our other powerful software like QGIS server, map server, geo server. But as you could see maybe with this digitizer functionality or the search router, you can already have like features in the client and pro provide like the search element or digitizer. And in the near future, I hope we implement OGC API features and then you will have more features in the client. Yeah. So in short, you can take uh, the GIS server or, or QGIS yes. server, it yes. depends on one mm -hmm. server. Yeah, and yeah. normally you have a lot of services already yeah. around yeah. from your administration and maybe from your country and you can all combine them yeah. easily. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? There's yes, a question there in the back. Um, I saw you're using uh, PHP in Symfony. Yes. Um, is it correct to assume that the PHP code renders the open layers code? 
no, no, no. So we, so as I said, we use PHP, and this is our um, Symphony, and we, so we are not only a client software. Um, we have server operations as well, so we communicate with the server and store our data using PHP um, ah, okay. functions. So but um, Open Layers, it's a client software, and we communicate with with the client and say, okay, draw this service or do this or do that. But um, this is not the work of PHP and Symfony. Ah, okay. So, so this is more JavaScript involved there. Yeah. So it's just um, uh, let's say uh, um, the mid part. As the yeah, front the, the communication with yeah, the server okay, okay. and with the database, and yeah, bringing yeah. this information maybe from the server to the client, and mm -hmm. okay, clear, thanks. Okay.